Hey everyone, it's Luke from Weld Pro. Today I'm back after having done the unboxing on the brand new MiG 155GD. Today I'm going to show you how to assemble the MiG 155GD and all of its components and accessories. Let's get started with the setup for stick. Most stick electrodes will run DC electrode positive, so I'm going to show you how to set the MiG 155GD up for DC positive polarity. With the ground clamp unraveled, I'm going to put this dense connector into the negative terminal on the front of the MiG-155. Once your ground clamp is connected, go ahead and do the same thing for the electrode holder. Insert the dense connector for the electrode holder into the positive lug on the front of the machine and rotate 90 degrees clockwise to ensure the connector is secured tightly. If the only thing you're going to be doing is stick welding, go ahead and energize your machine at this time. In the lower right hand corner on the face of the display, there's a button that allows you to select between stick and MIG mode. The machine is defaulted to MIG mode, so go ahead and press this button to switch to stick. The large dial in the center of the display is your amperage adjustment for stick welding. When you're MIG welding, this dial is used for wire speed. The wire speed values are indicated in white. The amperage values during stick welding are indicated with the yellow numbers. Now let's say you're going to run some 330 seconds 6011. This might run great around 85 amps. The 85 amp position would be just past the 12 o'clock mark on the face of the machine. With our ground clamp and electrode holder connected, our machine energized, the correct polarity set, and knowing how to adjust our amperage, we're now ready to strike our first arc with stick. Hopefully most of you use your machine for more than just sticks, so let's go ahead and show you how to set up the MIG process next. I'm going to show you how to set up solid wire in the MIG 155 GD, as well as connect a 7525 blended shielding gas to the machine. Let's go ahead and get started by hooking up the flow meter to our gas bottle and this double-ended gas hose to the back of the machine and the flow meter. The gas hose is a ball and socket design, so it won't require any Teflon tape. Simply install the threaded connector and tighten it down with a wrench. Be sure not to over tighten. Next, we need to install some Teflon tape on the threads on our flow meter. This will ensure that the coupler we're going to install seals correctly. Be sure that none of the Teflon tape covers the orifice, otherwise a piece of material could fly through the gas line and get clogged in the solenoid valve. Install the coupler and tighten it down with a wrench. When installing the gas hose into the bottom of the coupler, you won't need any Teflon tape. This is a ball and socket design and you can simply tighten it down with a wrench. Proceed by installing the flow meter to your mixed gas or argon cylinder. Be sure that the flow meter is in the vertical position. This is important for accuracy of gas flow measurement with the ball. Go ahead and tighten the fitting down for the flow meter using a wrench. Next, we'll open our gas cylinder. We open it very slowly so as to not shock the flow meter. Be sure to open the gas cylinder all the way to the stop. There's a dual seat system and if you don't open the valve all the way, it can leak. With the machine energized, squeeze the trigger on the MIG gun. This will open the solenoid valve and start the flow of gas. We use the brass screw on the flow meter to adjust the flow rate. I'm going to set mine at 20 cubic feet per hour. Now that we have our gas connections set up, let's go ahead and set up the face of the machine, including the MIG gun. Because I'm using solid wire, I'm going to continue to run DC electrode positive polarity. If I were using a self-shielded wire, like the wire that comes with the machine, I would run this on DC electrode negative polarity. Since my ground clamp is already connected to the negative terminal, I need to energize my wire feeder off the positive terminal. We do this by connecting this dongle down at the bottom of the machine into the positive terminal. You'll secure this connection the same way, rotating about 90 degrees to the right. Now the positive terminal on the front of your machine is feeding the wire feeding unit. Next, let's go ahead and set up the MIG gun and get the wire fed through the liner. There are two O-rings on the male end of the MIG cable that goes into the machine. It's important that before inserting this male end of the MIG cable, you loosen the wing nut that's located on top of the wire feeding unit. Once the wing nut is loose, you can go ahead and insert the male connector into the machine. Retighten this wing bolt to secure the cable. Next, go ahead and flip down the spring tensioner. Open the drive roll assembly. 
Remove any plastic from your MIG gun. Also, remove the nozzle. We do this by unscrewing it counterclockwise. Under the nozzle, you'll find the contact tip. Use a pair of MIG pliers or the included tool to remove the contact tip. It's important that this contact tip comes out prior to feeding the wire through. If not, it'll hit the contact tip and cause a wire jam. To remove the wire spool retainer and spring, install the spool of wire over the arbor and reinstall the washer, the spring, and the retainer. Feed the solid MIG wire through this flexible entry tube. The wire will pass through the drive rolls and into the liner for the MIG gun. It's important to note there are two main types of drive rolls. On the right, I have a knurled roller. On the left, I have a smooth drive roll. The knurled roller would be used for flux core wire and the smooth drive roll is used for solid wire. Also, it's important to make sure that your drive roll is sized correctly compared to your wire. Each drive roll is stamped with a value that indicates its wire size. When this value is pointed outward, that size is lined up with the wire. Close your drive roll assembly and the tensioner. Add a little tension to the drive rolls, not too much though. Be sure that the white switch above the drive roll assembly is set to MIG mode, not spool gun. We need to insert this 4-pin trigger switch Amphenol connector into the bottom of the front of the machine. We do this by lining up the grooves, inserting it, and tightening the ring clockwise. Energize the machine and we'll adjust some settings on the front display. First, let's go ahead and make sure we're in MIG mode, not stick. Squeeze the trigger on the MIG gun to begin feeding wire through the liner. You'll see the spool begin to spin. After a few moments, the wire speed will increase rapidly. This is to help get wire through the liner tube as quickly as possible. Don't try to adjust your wire speed during this time. When the wire comes out of the gas diffuser, reinstall the contact tip, tighten it clockwise, and use a pair of MIG pliers or the tool that was included. Reinstall the gas nozzle, tighten it clockwise, and be sure to clip any excess wire. That's it, your MIG gun's ready to go. Go ahead and reinstall the side cover on the machine. We should be ready to strike our first arc. The MIG 155 GD is capable of accepting an aluminum spool gun. We didn't do this setup today. There will be a special video just for hooking up the spool gun and running aluminum in the future, so stay tuned. We've gone ahead and fed our wire through the liner, reinstalled the contact tip and the gas nozzle. Now stay tuned for part three where we show you how to MIG weld with the 155 GD. Before you leave, take a moment and click the subscribe button under this video. Also, enable your alerts. Here at WeldPro, we're committed to releasing lots of tutorial and how-to videos to better help you as a welder. By subscribing to our channel and enabling notifications, you'll be alerted the minute we release new content. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. We'll respond as quickly as possible. Thanks again, and from all of us here at WeldPro, we can't wait to see what you build with your brand new MIG-155 GD.